Although Sarah Monroe's garden is very young, it's on the right path to her philosophy that wildlife belong in her living space. I grew up in Temple, and this part of Temple was very near where I grew up, but quite undeveloped. Uh, when we were kids, we called it Indian burial grounds, and you would find arrowheads. In 2009, Sarah returned to Temple to build a house with her dad. It was very special to me that it stayed the way it was when I was a kid, if we could try to preserve a little piece of that wildness that was here when I was a kid. And then I spent several months trying to find someone to help me with the garden. Uh, I had a lot of people offering to bring me the sod next week, uh, but I was determined not to put any sod in the yard. She lucked into artist Brooks Gist, who gave foothold to her ideas. Along with giving the young gardens a wraparound walkway, Brooks directed rainfall away from the house. You can see there's a natural slope here, and, and before there was pathway, it was mud that eroded. I just kind of took a shovel and drew the pathway around and Sarah said, oh yeah, that that looks good. I think we ought to, and we'd work together and, and would change it up, you know, wherever we needed to go. But basically drew it out with a shovel and uh, started lining it with uh, limestone. And then we got crushed granite put in, the, in between the limestone. And most places it seems to work very well. We did do a little bit of French drains in places. We took out the grass and then we lined most of it with a, a liner. Sarah selected plants that agree with her Blackland Prairie and Caliche soil. After a late freeze, many young plants were still in recovery mode. Evergreen structures covered for them. I thought the thing that would save my plant nerdiness and my need for a, one of everything was that we have a consistent pathway. So the lines of the pathway calm things down while you have these little spots of mixed flowers. Sarah doesn't mind seasonal dormancy since she's growing year-round for migrant and resident wildlife. I feel very strongly about the relationship between plants and the animals that we live around. From the comfy porch, she watches seasonal and even hourly changes. Brooks keeps water slowly sinking in as it treks to the backyard. And then we have the rain garden in the back that takes the overflow from the rain barrels into the garden itself. So we're, as much as possible, the idea is to hold the water onto the property. To screen a side fence with vines that attract birds and pollinators, Brooks designed sturdy trellises. I noticed all this cross vine just kind of crawling along the ground. There was a little fence next door the neighbors had that it was trying to grow up but not doing much. So one of the first trellises, or trelli as we call them, that we built was there for that cross vine. Another trellis sports spring blooming coral honeysuckle for hummingbirds and pollinators. On the other side of the path, one has twined itself into a standalone evergreen standout. And the fascinating thing is I have done nothing to shape it. It has done that itself. It's just happy on that trellis and it's just bushy and full of life. That coral honeysuckle is one of the most beautiful plants. Native snapdragon vine, a favorite with butterflies, anchors another trellis. The hummingbirds love it. It's just a gorgeous thing. It is such a wonderful little vine. It's so delicate, but such beautiful little flowers. It tolerates the shade. It even blooms in the shade. And it just dies back in the winter and comes back in the spring. In this certified wildlife habitat, not every plant is native. Sarah's irises honor her paternal grandmother who treasured these drought defiance. I'm a total plant nerd and have always been a plant nerd. My grandparents were all gardeners. My dad was a very avid gardener and he started introducing native plants in our yard in Temple in the early 80s. I love all the plants and I'm fascinated by their interaction with each other and what plants grow well with each other. To grow organic food for the family, Sarah picked raised beds enriched with homemade compost to solve the problem of poor draining soil. For climbing plants, Brooks designed trellises framed by recycled cedar. He anchored more cedar limbs to naturally enclose this side of the garden. You know, you do things in phases, so, but I quite love the look of that uh, cedar. I think it creates a great backdrop for the native plants. It really shows them off well. 
His paths meander along wildlife plants to wind up back in front through a gate he designed out of recycled metal. His cedar does a nice job of hiding the air conditioner from the street. Throughout the garden, he and Sarah recycled materials into homes for wildlife. It's been a great collaboration with Brooks to do things that are a little unusual, but also provide habitat. So that little teepee also provides a little hiding place for the possums that live in the lot next door. Brooks built screech owl and barn owl houses from basketball flooring his dad rescued from salvage. On the backyard deck, everyone coming to dine gets an upper level seat to watch wildlife at their meals. It's also another perspective for the artwork that Sarah values. First of all, I think art is what redeems us as a species. I actually started by commissioning a piece for my 50th birthday, done by Aaron Gist, Brooks's brother. I think it gives a nice anchor at the end of that pathway. I like the tension between more structural, formal pieces or uh, hard pieces against soft lines. Until the vines mature, she filled one trellis spot with vibrant dimension, designed by Marjorie Rainierson. Brooks designed the pose for this bird bath. I just basically was drawing with um with the rebar, you know, you twist it around and you, you find your form and, and, uh, and then try to make it work. He made his boldest statement out front, again with recycled materials. It's based on a triptych, a painting that Brooks had done. It's a goddess birthing universes. It's a fertility goddess in, in common language, I guess. But it was very important to me to have something at the front that uh, spoke to the ideas of the garden and the joy of the garden. And the base is concrete, but I put a sonic tube through the middle of it so that we could plant a little vine to grow up onto the, onto the uh, sculpture. It's just working with nature or, or with plants and it just adds another, basically another uh, tool that you can work with. I just think that's what it's all about. It's all about celebrating the, the fact that the earth, if we leave it alone, will grow things. <laughs> you know, if we just let plants have their space, every day it's a little bit different. Every week things change. My neighbor came by yesterday to do a little tour, and he said, you know what I notice about these native plants? Look, they're really quite beautiful.